Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Data Dive powered by Market Movers. My name is Tyler Nethercott, better known as Teapot, and I am back this week excited to talk about the NBA season tipping off. I've got 10 hot takes for this upcoming season and I can't wait to share them with you. As always, this video is brought to you by Market Movers. Visit marketmoversapp.com and use promo code DIVE, D-I-V-E, when you check out and you'll get 14 days completely free to try out Market Movers and then 20% off for life any plan as long as you are subscribed. Now let's get into the data. All right, now remember, I always say this, do your own research. This is only for fun. These are some predictions that I have for the upcoming season. And these are not necessarily things that I'm hoping will happen. These are things that I think could happen. And number one, my hot take number one, there are only five contenders for this 2023-24 MVP award. Now, why is that important to cards? Because an MVP favorite can lead to card prices rising. And I'm gonna take a look here at Joel Embiid's cards last year, and you can see right in this area, Embiid got super hot. They started talking about him winning the MVP, and there was actually the hype before he actually won the award, obviously. So we saw this card spi uh, price spike here. Now what's really interesting, and I wanted to show this, is that not all of his card prices went up. Some of them, in fact, did not go up, including his silvers, both in RAW and PSA 10. During that time frame, those cards remained flat. One thing that I have noticed is that cards have to have seemingly some commodity to them, some liquidity, some regular transactions happening with a specific sales volume in order for their prices to shoot up first. And so if you're just looking for short-term speculation, buying the cards that are the most frequently selling and the most liquid, as we say, might be the best bets. Whereas ones that are more rare, like this one, which is just Pop 84 and is PSA 10, those are the cards that you want to have long-term. Those are the cards that you want to have after a sustained uptick, after a player is really gaining popularity and notoriety across the board. So something to keep in mind there. Now, who are these five MVP contenders? Obviously, three of them being Nikola Jokic, Giannis, and Embiid, of course. The other two I'm gonna say, Jason Tatum and Shea Gilgis-Alexander. The Celtics are going to be a defensive nightmare, and they have the offensive depth as good as any team in the league. Tatum and Brown have been extremely streaky players. They're both capable of huge games. Then they're also capable of one for 18 from the field nights. Tatum is the unquestionable leader of that team, and he's one of the six best players in the NBA, in my opinion. Shea Gilgis Alexander just fills up the box score completely, and the Oklahoma City Thunder are my Sacramento Kings for the upcoming season. So let's jump over and take a look at some of their prices and see what they've done. Over the last 180 days, you can see Shea Gilgis Alexander, he's up 11% over the last six months. Tatum, he's down 12%. So not massive swings in either direction. In fact, what I've seen is that most players have not gone up since the last NBA season. We did not see the usual run up in prices for many players before the season like we have in the past. What does that mean for the upcoming season? I have no idea. Are we gonna see more swings? Is it gonna be more of a steady decline down? Will the basketball card market continue to tank? That remains to be seen. Now there's one obvious thing here. You're saying teapot. There is a major player you're missing, a major player which takes me to my hot take number two. Luka Doncic has exactly 0.1% chance of winning the MVP this season, in spite of being a top five player in the league and second right now in Vegas futures odds to win the MVP. Luka has been the favorite for MVP in each of the last two seasons before the season began, yet he finished eighth last year and fifth the year before. Now this upcoming season, I say he has relatively no chance and that is because I do not believe that the Luka plus Kyrie Irving experiment is going to work. The Mavericks have no depth and they may just miss the playoffs again this year. In fact, I do believe they're going to miss the playoffs. And when they do, no player missing the playoffs is going to win the MVP without somehow absurdly separating himself from the rest of the pack. And those big three behemoths will have something to say about that. So what does that mean for Luka cards? I think they could remain flat at best. This season could present some serious buying opportunities for the long term because Luca, I do believe, has championships and MVPs yet in his future, just not this season. Now, if we quickly look at his chart, I've got his Prism Silver, that iconic shot, that step back fadeaway three in a PSA 10, and look at the journey this card has been on over time, all the way back, and you remember the high sale for this card, 
$10,400. $10,400, most recently, down to under $1,200. So this card has been on quite a journey. If I'm looking back, this is going all the way back to October, uh, I believe October of 2019. So technically this card has doubled since then, but man, if you look at this chart, what a journey downward, 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 downward. I do believe in Luca long-term and he's my hot take number two. This is not Luca's season. Now moving on to number three, Golden State will be a bubble team and they may even miss the playoffs. Now this one is hotly debated. I heard a lot of people in our members only live stream and in other chats on whatnot saying they think the Warriors are gonna win. They're gonna win another championship. I'm on the other end of it. I think this is the end, the beginning of the end. I think the dynasty is over. The only question that remains for me is will Steph Curry retire a forever warrior or will he join up somewhere else to make another real run at the title? Will he eventually ask for a trade? Like Luca, keep an eye on Steph card prices this year. There could be some real discounts. And if I jump over and look at his price movements right now, over the last 365 days, he's down about 14%. Over the last 180 days, down about 5%. And then let's just look at the last 30 days, still on a steady decline. They lost their opening game at home to Phoenix, a Phoenix team without Bradley Beal. I don't know what's gonna happen with them this year. I think Steph is gonna be relied on a little bit too much. I've got some other takes on the Warriors that I'll get into in a minute. Hot take number four, the Lillard to Milwaukee experiment will work, but maybe not right away. Team chemistry matters. It takes time to find the right balance. And I believe that Dame fits perfectly into that team and complements Giannis on the offensive side. Now, Milwaukee may need to find a way to truly go all in and acquire one additional piece to give them some more defensive depth. That was obviously the big trade-off. You get the offensive Dame and the ability to score on his own clutch factor, but then you got Drew Holiday, who also was clutch at times, and obviously one of the best defensive guards in the league, which was a big part of that Bucks identity. I am worried about the Bucks deck depth overall, but I believe that they are a firm lock for a showdown with the Celtics at some point in the Eastern Conference playoffs. Now, if Dame shines alongside Giannis, I expect a resurgence in his card prices, and as rising tides rise all ships, Giannis could be in order for a bounce back too. So let's look at price movements here again. We've got the last 365 days. Dame, he's not down, so that's something. Up, you know, a modest 3%. Giannis, on the other hand, who's done all the things, who's done all the things, down 27%, getting bounced in the first round last year to the Miami Heat certainly did not help his card prices. I like Giannis cards to bounce back somewhat this year. Hopefully, big Giannis fan. Don't have as many cards of his as I would like, so if they keep going down, maybe I'll finally be able to afford some of them. Now, hot take number five. Nikola Jokic will seem as disinterested as ever in basketball, yet he will still put up efficiency numbers unlike anything we have ever seen. Okay, maybe this isn't really a hot take at all, but it just bears repeating. There's a reason that Jokic won back-to-back -back MVPs, and he probably should have won last year, to be honest. Giannis could have three-peated, but Jokic deservingly won in 2021. So what's the card impact? I honestly have no idea here. I really don't see much happening this coming year with Jokic cards, but I could be wrong. My gut on floor versus ceiling is that a decline is more probable than any sizable increase because there has been sort of more attention on him, especially winning that championship last year. I do think the Nuggets are gonna be the favorites in the West to get back to the finals. Will they win it again? I'm not really sure. If they don't, that might spell a decline for Jokic cards. All right, now let's quickly get into my other five hot takes. This is gonna be very rapid fire. Number one, I've talked about him in the past. Jordan Poole, I think, will average 30 points per game, but on an atrocious 39% shooting. He'll see sizzle around his card prices for a bit before people stop caring because of how bad Washington is. We've already seen his card prices go up. I saw that coming. I didn't really buy enough Jordan Poole cards to speculate effectively on it, admittedly. I've been busy, but I do think there's gonna be some early hype and then some fizzle around Poole. Here's another one, and this is me maybe being a little hopeful. Marvin Bagley averages 18 points per game for the Pistons, coming off the bench on 58% shooting, but nobody will care. It's just not enough. The former number two pick, when I say Marvin Bagley, some people cringe for various reasons. Maybe they're Kings fans wondering why they didn't take Luka. Maybe they're people who went all in on Bagley cards early. Either way, I like Bagley as a role player, a consistent, effective, efficient scoring player in the NBA. I just don't think his cards are going anywhere. My next pick, Jonathan Kuminga, 
will emerge as the future of the Warriors rebuild. By the end of the season, if my prediction is correct and things are looking rough for the Warriors and they're not going to be a playoff contender, who knows what could happen before the, uh, or during the trade deadline. I think Kaminga is a guy they're going to try to lock up and they'll let him start to take the reins as a big part of their team's future. Next, Jalen Williams, J-A-L-E-N Williams, will have a second year breakout and he will average at least 20 points per game. I told you that I think the Thunder are going to be dangerous this year. Chet Holmgren, provided he stays healthy, looks like he could be very good. We all know that Shea is very good. They've got other pieces, and I like Jalen Williams as the one on the team to step up and emerge, just like Shea did last year. And finally, Wemby, Scoot, and Brandon Miller will be vying for the Rookie of the Year award this coming season, while the Thompson Twins will round out the all-rookie first team. So keep an eye on their card prices. I've said it in the past. I did the video on Wemby. Watch the hype. Let them settle in. If you like some of those guys early and their cards aren't doing anything crazy, maybe go after them. Otherwise, sit a few plays out, let them come down, and maybe pursue them next year in the offseason. So what do you think? Is my crystal ball busted? Let me know down in the comments. And remember, this is all for fun. And to get the conversation going, I'm really excited about the NBA season. I don't actually promise to have all the answers. It'll be fun to look back next year and see how many of these things came true or not. Now, if you would, do me a huge favor and like this video. Make sure to subscribe, share it with a friend. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, happy investing, keep on collecting, and make sure to have fun.